Hey everybody, Pandy here of Pandy's Hair Candy and More. If this is your first time visiting the channel, welcome. If you are already chat family with me, welcome back, baby. We are here, the final season of Queen Sugar. And you already know I am super excited to be here reviewing and recapping this phenomenal final season. So over here, for the most part, you already know the channel is based on my love for hair, beauty, wellness, self-care, and all that good stuff. Hence the channel name, Pandy's Hair Candy, and more. I also do product reviews and TV show reviews. And this, Queen Sugar, I have been following since the very beginning. So basically, OWN released the season seven trailer for Queen Sugar, which is the final season, um, back on September 6th. And they're basically wrapping up their final run. This is, of course, a Ava DuVernay experience okay now the series was based on natalie basil's 2014 novel queen sugar and it focused on the trio of the borderline siblings played of course by don lynn gardner retina wesley and coffee sirobi which of course is nova ralph angel and charlie and of course, their extended family in this fictional Louisiana community of St. Josephine, St. Joe for short. Okay, so the series basically premiered back in 2016 and DuVernay pretty much has taken it and just ran wild. Okay, and this show has been a success. So here we are, fast forward, we're at season seven. And I am going to be recapping and reviewing episode one for you guys today. So I just wanted to give you all a little bit of the backstory, just in case you are a first time visitor to my channel, or maybe you have never watched Queen Sugar and you need a little bit of the backstory. So again, I want to thank you for taking a moment to click on the video. I got my blues playing in the background, baby, because I had to get into character for this one. Okay, so let's fast forward. We are here. We're in 2022, and this is the final season, the seventh season, and we are at episode one. Now, we basically begin this episode seeing Auntie Vi frantically searching for, cut that part out. That's uh, episode two, y'all. Let me get my notes in order, baby. All right, so here we are. So we're at Queen Sugar, season seven, episode one, and it is titled, and when great souls die. So the episode basically begins with us seeing the family getting ready to attend a christening for Ralph Angel and Darla's baby. True. Like their son, Blue, they're getting prepared to christen Ralph Angel and Darla's baby. She was pregnant last season. She has since given birth to little baby girl, True. So the family is all prepared, getting ready. And then we also see Prosper's daughter, Billy, is there staying with Prosper. She kind of appears to be, I don't know, it seems like she's avoiding her husband. Um, he's been blowing up her phone. She's been avoiding his calls. But nevertheless, Billy is there in St. Joe stand with Mr. Prosper. Now, of course, the episode begins with us seeing Ralph Angel. He's out working um, on what appears to be a crew on a shrimp boat. 
And y'all know that ain't Ralph Angel. Ralph Angel likes to be working the family farm. So he's working because he is a family man. After all, he's going to do what it takes to make sure the family has what they need. But as he's working, he is reminiscing kind of in deep thought because he knows he done effed up basically. And, you know, that he basically didn't make the right decisions with regard to um, losing the farm that his father, Pop Bordelon, left him. Now, he's also contemplating this whole co-op situation. You know, the farmers have been working diligently to try to get in with the southeastern Louisiana uh, co-op of farmers so that they can all kind of get out of the red and get back into the black. So we see him there again working on the shrimp boat. But of course, his heart is still with the Borderlong family farm, which we know he lost last season. Now, next, we see Darla. Darla and her beautiful baby girl, Miss True Borderlong. Uh, they are at the house. <laughs> <laughs> and then we end up seeing Hollywood and Auntie Vi. So I'm just kind of trying to bring the visuals in. Again, for those of you who may not watch the show, so you are familiar with who the characters are. So here's Hollywood and Auntie Vi. Now, they appear to be enjoying some downtime with the baby. Hollywood and Auntie Vi is there. Hollywood ends up checking in with Darla because he can clearly see that the baby has her somewhat exhausted. You know, it appears that Ralph Angel, if he's working on the shrimp boat, he's probably been gone for maybe six months. I think that's how long they go out. And so, you know, he's just checking in with her being Hollywood, making sure she's good. And he reassures her that all she has to do is say the word and him and Vi got her if she needs a break with little baby girl. True. She tells Hollywood that she's fine, but that it's Ralph Angel she's concerned about. Hollywood totally gets it, even remarking that he's a lot like Prosper in that way. Now, back on the shrimp boat, Miss Trin, and I forgot to include a clip here for you all. Miss Trin was the little Asian woman who was Ralph Angel's ex-girlfriend. Her parents actually owned the shrimp boat business, but I believe her mother either has passed or she passed the business down to her. But either way, this is Ralph Angel's ex. Now, Miss Trin and Ralph Angel kind of hug at the end of his shift. And they kind of catch up and she reassures him that she's there for him and his family if he needs her. Okay. Now there was a kind of awkward moment where her current husband, she since got married, walks up and calls him Ralph. And she sharply corrects him. His name is Ralph Angel. So it was very interesting, but it was purely innocent, I think. Now back at the house, Ralph Angel is now off of work, okay? He's there. He's checking in with Darla. He's checking in with Auntie Vi and Hollywood. And he shares the gifts that Miss Fan. So Miss Fan didn't pass. I forgot about that. Miss Fan sent gifts through Miss Tran, um, Ralph Angel's ex-girlfriend, to give to Darla for the baby. And... <laughs> Auntie Vi laughs at Ralph Angel trying to teach the baby sign language. But when Auntie Vi tries to give the baby girl a chicken bone or something like that to suck on, claiming that the baby is teething, Darla quickly swoops in and reiterates that her baby is on a strict plant-based diet. Now, I kind of get where Auntie Vi is coming from about the chicken bone, but not yet, Auntie Vi. This baby is still a new hand baby. Next, we see Charlie's son, Micah. Micah is back in St. Joe. Now, let me make sure I got a visual for you guys of Micah. Because, again, we're just catching up. The season has just re-began, right? So, 
Micah is back, and <laughs> in this scene, we see Micah has his own apartment, and he's FaceTiming with Charlie. It appears that, you know, Charlie is on this campaign trail. I think she's running for state senate or something. So she's not going to be in this um, season a lot. They kind of show her on the FaceTime a lot. And, you know, she's on the campaign trail. So after he ends the FaceTime conversation, a woman friend appears. And it looks like she was an overnight guest of his. And just as he ended the FaceTime call with Charlie, the woman kind of emerges from the background, kissing him on the cheek. And she's kind of like a little scantily dressed and holding what appears to be her shoes and some other personal belongings. And, you know, it's early in the morning and she tells him how she really enjoyed last night as he walks her to the door and sees her out. Now, right at that moment, y'all, as he is seeing her out of his apartment, he receives some type of notification alert on his phone. And when he checks the phone, y'all, to my surprise, it looks like some type of social media post, like maybe it could be an IG or a Facebook post. And in this post is a picture of Micah and his guy friend from school. And um, they're on the beach. Now, the thing is, the picture itself looks very intimate. It looks very intimate, very loving in appearance. And if I didn't just see Micah seeing the young lady out of his crib, I would gather based on this picture that Micah was a same gender loving man. So I want to also mention that I saw signs of this kind of lead into this direction last season between Micah and this same friend. I can't remember his name, indicating the possibility. However, Micah was very conflicted to me. After all, this is a whole new world to him with him going off to college, Charlie keeping him so sheltered and, you know, Auntie Nova always trying to enlighten him to her alternative living situation. So, you know, um, Micah was a bit conflicted, in my opinion, in the previous seasons. However, I think we're going to kind of see Micah go in some different directions this season, okay? Uh, because Charlie did keep him very guarded, very sheltered, and was pretty much against him spending too much time with his Auntie Nova. So it'll be interesting to kind of see how his role plays out this season. Now, next, we head over to old man Mr. Prosper's house. And we see Mr. Prosper uh, putting on a lot of cologne. He is just dapping it up, dapping it up, right? And then he hears the phone keep ringing. You can hear the distant sounds of a cell phone kind of keep ringing off up in the background, right? And so as he peeps out the door, um, he notices his daughter, Billy, is looking at her cell phone and hitting ignore and then kind of setting the phone down, okay? And as I stated, it looked like he was getting ready to get his day started. He was freshening up in the mirror. He was putting on his cologne. And then all of a sudden, we heard those faint sounds of the cell phone ringing in the background. So Prosper walks over to her and tells her he's not going to stop trying to get in touch, in touch with her and, and that, you know, he's not trying to get off up into her business, but that she just can't keep ignoring Vince's calls. Now, Vince is her husband. She done bounced and left him. He's in Chicago. She's there in St. Joe. Okay. And she kind of deflects away from that address in his statement with complimentary, you know, statements telling him how wonderful he looks and ask him if he's got a hot date. And he, of course, responds by telling her, no, he simply heading over to Sandy's place to repair a window. Now, Billy jokingly replies, you must have fixed her whole house by now, daddy. <laughs> and he replies that they're just friends, but that he does enjoy her company. 
Now he then goes on to ask her about how the debt relief efforts are coming along. Because, you know, Billy has been working with a lot of the farmers there to kind of help help them get connected with the different USDA farmers relief programs because they are seriously in battle, literally the black farmers against the white farmers. And it's this whole fiasco. And if you've been keeping up with the seasons, you know what I'm talking about. So she's kind of there in that capacity, but she's also got some personal stuff going on back at her home front in Chicago. Okay. So she's kind of like there to help, but she's also there running away from her own personal demons, if you ask me. Now, again, Prosper asked her how that is coming along. And uh, she informs him that everything is pretty much still on hold. Apparently, there are some white farmers who are claiming reverse racism. So next, we see Nova. And it looks like Nova has gotten really close with a new love interest this season. We see her out. Looks like she's on what appears to be a romantic stroll with Mr. Dominique who is clearly playing her love interest this season. Trying to get a better picture for you guys. So yeah, they're out. Looks like they're on an unofficial kind of date. They're strolling along. They're taking in a beautiful countryside walk. And apparently Nova's a bit nervous, a bit stressed and overwhelmed because she has this huge new article about to drop. And, you know, he is trying to deliberately ease her tension by being a hopeless, loving romantic. He is totally trying to take her mind off this stuff. Okay, so this, again, is an unofficial date. It's very quaint, yet so meaningful. And I immediately take notice of the fact that Nova's dreads are gone. She's rocking her natural hair and a sporty little bob. Uh, one half of her hair appears to be shaved. So this is a bit of a difference. The other half is displaying her beautiful natural curls. So Nova's doing some new things this season, honey. And I also noticed that this new love interest is not the crooked white cop, which I believe was his name, Kevin. I believe his name was Kevin from the previous seasons, the one that she had to lurk around in the cut with as the side piece until he finally got up the nerve to leave his wife. Yes, that guy. This is not him. Um, this is, again, a handsome chocolate dark brother by the name of Dominique, who seems to be very in love with and very attentive to Nova's needs. He tells her all about the romantic plans that he has for her for the rest of the day, clearly trying to take her mind off of anything that would cause her any type of stress, right? Now, back at the house, we do see Ralph Angel and Darla walking and talking in the yard. They're kind of catching up, if you will, since he's been gone on the shrimp boat for those past six months. They're out there just kind of enjoying the moments with the baby girl. And he shares with her that he's hopeful for the co-op to be approved. Darla kind of gives a very, oh Lord, here we go again type look, but leans in and tells him that, you know, She's here for him, and she believes it'll work out, right? Now, they get ready to head out to Ralph Angel's pickup truck because I think they're getting ready to go head to, like, one of their co-op meetings or whatever. And they joke around for a bit before pulling off, and Darla asks him if he still plans to take the long way. And I remember thinking, well, what on earth is Darla talking about now? And it appears that Ralph Angel has been avoiding driving past the old family farm that Pop Bordelon left to him because, of course, he lost it. 
So when Darla asked him, was he ever going to go past that way again? His response to her was not yet. So I feel like Ralph Angel is holding out on physically passing the land until he writes his wrongs. So hopefully we see that come about in this particular season. Now, meanwhile, back at Nova's, we see her and again, her new love interest, Mr. Dominique. They are just kind of hanging out chatting and going through boxes of stuff from Charlie's garage and her article drops. It like came through online. So they click on and listen for a few moments and so far so good. So next we see Auntie Vi and Hollywood. They're either down, I think they're at the diner, but I believe I want to say they changed the name to the real spot. So nevertheless, we see them and they're kind of out having a bite to eat at their place of business. Trying to see if I got that clip for y'all. And I don't think I do. So here we go, Auntie Vi in Hollywood. Now they're in there again having a bite to eat. And at the moment... Um, Hollywood is kind of doting over baby girl, true, right? And her young Spanish employee, Joaquin, brings out a slice of pie. And when she asks what's in the pie, he replies, just a little twist I made to your famous blackberry pie. Now, Auntie Vi, of course, ain't trying to hear that until she tastes it, that is. And she can honestly use the help, but Hollywood tells her he still got his good side eye on Joaquin, but that the pie is great. So she definitely kind of jokes with him, lets him know the pie was okay, but don't be in there messing with her recipes. Now, next, we see Micah entering what appears to be some type of photography studio. Now, remember Micah went off to school and then he came back home and he kind of disappointed his parents by letting them know he wasn't really feeling that. He wanted to do freelance photography. So anyways, he's back in St. Joe and we see him entering what appears to be a photography class of some type. And then he notices, wouldn't you know it, y'all? His ex-girlfriend, Kiki. Kiki is all grown up. She is beautiful as ever. Okay. And she's working there. So they kind of hug briefly and catch up. And it appears that she's um, a TA for the activist photographer that Micah is there to basically study under. So the two are old high school sweethearts who simply went in two different directions. And so their chance meeting was well-received yet kind of awkward, right? Now, next, we see Ralph Angel back at what appears to be the co-op. Um, oh, really quick, y'all, let me show you guys. This is the guy. This is the activist um, photographer that Micah is going to be studying up under. I cannot remember his name. It is, it's like something real slick, but I can't think of it right now. It'll come back to me, y'all, and I'll have it by the next episode. But anyway, we see Ralph Angel back at the co-op and he's getting ready to meet with the farmers, you know, because they are prepping for, you know, whether or not they're going to get the news that they've been accepted into this co-op for the farmers. They like really need this relief. They're trying to get emergency relief through the USDA grants. People are behind on all kinds of bills. And, you know, on top of that, they have these lawsuits going with the black farmers against the white farmers. So it's a whole mess in so many different directions going on. So, Ralph Angel is diligently working hard to try to elevate. And inside, of course, he's also warning the Black farmers to kind of be on their P's and Q's. Um, 
and on their best behavior because the Mo Evans is en route to see them and hopefully bring the good news that everyone is longing for. Now, Miss Parthena is one of the seasoned lady farmers. Prosper and another gentleman are jokingly laughing at how critical Ralph Angel is carrying on when out of nowhere, Miss Parthena puts Prosper on the spot and blurts out, what are your intentions with my friend, Sandy? We're not getting any younger, so you need to man up and make your move or get out the way someone, so someone else can. Now, Prosper, of course, declines to respond to Miss Parthena and says he thinks he needs to go refill his coffee and hurry up and whisk away. Now, at that moment, y'all, Darla steps in and pulls Miss Parthena to the side to have a little conversation with her. Now, this is Miss Parthena. This is the only picture I could find of her. Um, but she wants to discuss the books because, you know, Miss Parthena had asked Darla to kind of help look over things because we know that's what Darla did. Before she got all messed up with drugs, Darla was very skilled at what she did. Now, Darla is very concerned because one of Miss Parthena's accounts is overdrawn and it appears that the mortgage is 90 days late. So, of course, she steps in to ask some critical questions and even offers to go with her in person to the bank because this really is her lane. And I think she really sincerely wants to help because Miss Parthena is an older woman and she's a farmer and she's just there. She's by herself. She's doesn't have any family. She's not married or anything like that. So she just wants to offer her assistance. So next, we see that the big wig has arrived. Miss Mo Evans is there. She has come to town, y'all. And let me see. I believe I might have an image with Mo Evans in it. And I do. So here is a clip that is Mo Evans there in the blue jeans and the blue striped top talking to Mr. Prosper and Darla. Okay. Mo Evans is there in person at the co-op to give Ralph Angel the news about whether or not they've been accepted into their region of co-ops. So they're basically doing a walkthrough on the um, co-op property and basically getting acquainted with her. And it's evident that Ralph Angel has done his homework and research and wants it to be a yes, because this will make a huge impact on all of the area farmers' lives. And things appear to be off to a good start. And in walks Nova, y'all. Now, Ralph Angel immediately peeps game with Nova and Miss Mo. His lesbian spider senses went off because their interaction was very lesbonic and he warns Nova to steer clear of Mo. Now, next again, we see the farmers meeting at the co-op and everyone is overwhelmed, frustrated, and Mo Evans stands up to introduce herself and give them the word that they have been accepted into the Southern Louisiana Federation of Co-ops and welcome them to the 3%. So the meeting appears to end well when we then see Billy, farmer's daughter, get approached by one of the male gentleman farmers. He approaches her to ask her out, and y'all, he was nice looking. Um, but next we see Kiki and Micah hanging out. So looks like they decided to go catch up after all, kind of get reacquainted, and it looks purely innocent. Um, but they're hanging out and catching up. You know, it's been years since they hung out, and lo and behold, Kiki pulls out a blunt and tries to pressure Micah to get faded with her. Now, initially, Micah declines because, you know, he has to be at baby girl, true Bordelon's christening, but then he ultimately caves. Now, meanwhile, Mr. Prosper is leaving from Miss Sandy's and 
<laughs> Here's Mr. Prosper and Miss Sandy. So I don't know why I just like them together. I think this would be great for Mr. Prosper. Um, I feel like he needs a woman companion and this, they just click, they click and she's such a lovely woman. So anyway, um, he's leaving Miss Sandy's and he awkwardly decides to go for it and ask her out on a date. And she laughs and says, basically, thank God, because she was running out of things for him to fix. And they kind of laugh about it. Now, again, we flash back to Nova's house and her and Dominique are sitting there. They're just kind of hanging out when all of a sudden, I want to say um, she gets a FaceTime call from what appears to be like an agent or something of hers on FaceTime, right? And uh, she's waiting for the word from her team, basically. And the call comes in and they basically inform her that they want to turn her book into a movie. Blessings and blood. And there, there's a six figure deal on the table. Now, Dominique, of course, is there. He overhears everything and he wants to celebrate. And then the reality hits her. She realizes that the family will never go along with this. If she proceeds to do this without telling them, it's going to be basically a civil war. You know, she goes on to tell him how initially writing the book almost tore the family apart. And, you know, she just doesn't think that they'll go along with it. So it literally almost broke the family. It opened up so many old wounds and then they kind of ended the scene there. Now we flash forward. It looks like everyone has met up at the church for baby girl's christening. We're at the church. It's Blue's christening. I'm sorry, True's christening. Blue, her brother, Ralph Angel and Darla's son. Remember, they sent him off to the boarding school for the gifted. So he's on FaceTime and Charlie's on FaceTime. And the whole family is there. It's a beautiful occasion. Auntie Vi gives this little speech about the baby's gown being passed down from like several generations for the service. So it was a lovely, lovely christening, right? So then, excuse me, y'all, we flash back to the house. Now, Micah is isolated and sitting in an area of the house kind of away from everyone when Nova spots him and comes right out and asks him if he's high. And he's like, just a little. Is it obvious? Kiki basically peer pressured him with the old, you never do anything spontaneous bit. And of course, here we are. So he then asks Nova, did his parents ever do anything like that for him, the christening that is? And she tells him, you know, your parents weren't exactly the christening type, but you were very much loved and blessed from the moment you were born. So then Nova then goes in the kitchen with Billy, Prosper's daughter, and <clears throat> it appears that she shared the movie offer situation with her and she swore her to secrecy and then in walks Auntie Vi trying to figure out what they're gossiping about and they go on to kind of rave about you know how good of a catch Dominique is for her and how they hope that she doesn't mess it up because in all of the seasons of Queen Sugar Nova has this way about just causing toxic situations or not causing them, but her relationships have all seemed to be very toxic, you know, and then she kind of puts up these walls. And though, even though the people are, cause she's bisexual. So even though the men or the women 
whomever she's dating at the time, try to really dig in and work through things with her. She puts up this wall like she loves hard, but then she runs away when it gets down to the nitty gritty. So they were just like, girl, he seems like a good catch. You know, you need to hang on to him because we know you cannot keep no man. <laughs> so they're going on and on and on about that, telling her how, you know, they basically hope she doesn't ruin the relationship. And this, of course, is mostly Auntie Vi. So then next, of course, we see the entire family, of course, go out for what Ralph Angel calls one final tradition as a part of the christening. And that is to add baby girl's name to the family book. Okay. Um, Ralph Angel goes on to add that true Bordelon's name will be added to the family book. And this was an especially sentimental um, scene because he acknowledges that he was not around when Blue was born. And he was very grateful that Pop Bordelon took care of it and stood in the gap and, and did that for him. But it was especially you know, sentimental because Darla's here, she's clean, she's sober, and he's here, and they're just trying to do things right. Um, it was so sweet. And then all of the sudden, y'all, with this beautiful scene taking place, all of the freaking sudden, here comes old wicked old Sam Landry, and he claims that he's here to congratulate Nova on all of her hard work. And I thought, oh, my God, he's about to blurt out the news about the movie deal. But that's not what happened, y'all. What ended up happening is he ended up handing Auntie Vi some type of paperwork indicating that their families are now once again intertwined and that he plans to pursue building the outlet mall on their land. And as he's preparing to leave, Vi asks him, are you sure, Sam? You want to go down this path? We both know where it leads. And he tells her before he drives off, you leave us no choice, Violet. And of course, y'all, in true Queen Sugar fashion, this is where episode one ends. Now, I don't know what it is between Sam Landry and Auntie Vi, but they always have this peculiar interaction between the two of them. Also, what is next for farmer, you know, uh, for the farmers now that they've been able to join this regional co-op? And then also, what do y'all think Nova is going to do about this whole movie deal? And also Dominique. And then Mo, because let's not forget that little lesbian exchange and eye gazing. Ralph Angel had the straight collar on it and was like, I already know how you get down. So please don't, don't. He just was like, please don't, because I already know how you get down. And then what about Billy, Prosper's daughter? Will she be able to keep her mouth closed? You know, because I don't even know why she told her. But anyway, and then also Mr. Prosper and Miss Sandy, they also seem to grow grown you know, quite fond of each other. And I personally love it. Um, so I'm hoping that that works out. And then Micah, I still can't quite figure out Micah and his character yet for the season, but it's definitely going to be interesting, especially with Kiki back in the mix. And then Little Blue, of course, is still away at boarding school. And then, of course, Charlie being on the campaign trail. So we probably won't see much of either of them this season. But y'all, again, that was episode one of Queen Sugar. We are officially in season seven. They have dubbed it the final season, and the title of this episode is And When Great Souls Die. You all drop down in the comments below and let me know if I left anything out, and let me know what your thoughts were on this episode if you caught it. Until next time, guys, stay safe, stay encouraged, and I will see you in the next video. Peace!